Hello everyone, I'm your host Brandon Trin and welcome to South Coast Focus, home of entertainment on the South Coast, presented by Saddleback College. The program we have today is a very exciting one that is sure to get your artistic side riled up. First, we're taking a look at a contemporary artist who deals in abstract art which is so vibrant and colorful it is sure to inspire you. Then, we'll listen to a one-man band who plays metal, punk, and rock music. Lastly, we'll learn about surf pop, a genre of music which originated in California that really gives you the feel of SoCal. Let's start with a very abstract artist that works down in Laguna Beach. He started out thinking music was his passion. Then one day, one painting changed his life. He now has the title of contemporary artist and creates graphic designs and takes photos, which help with his paintings. Down in Laguna Beach, there is a contemporary artist named Chris Justice, who's been working on abstract expressionism art. His interest in art started in high school with graffiti on canvas, but where did that interest for abstract expressionism start? I first got interested in abstract painting. I think I was 21. Yeah, 21. And I was at an art gallery with my mother. And there were these large abstract paintings on wood panels. Um, but these compositions were just so... At the time, I didn't know, I didn't know what to think of the images. They were these large blocks of color very symmetrical. I knew how it made me feel. And I remember saying to myself, I want to learn how to do that. So he went to an art store in a nearby lumber yard to get his tools and plywood so he could start his passion. At first, he started painting on plywood and through trial and error, he ended up using smoother surfaces like Baltic birch. He's been working on his art for 10 years now but what is the definition of his style known as abstract expressionism? For me, abstract expressionism is how the work makes me feel. The mystery of the image um, I'm essentially looking at um, has infinite possibilities and um, it's my job as the viewer to create a story that is significant to my being. But at the same time, the work is open to interpretation to be anything you want it to be. He's had his pieces featured at a restaurant named Central in Laguna Beach and an art gallery off South Coast Highway, all on wooden panels or on experimental sheet metal. A lot of his pieces have been inspired by old textural elements like rust, corrosion, old concrete, and dilapidated architecture from places he would visit. He's seen a lot and obtained years of experience, but what advice does he have to share from it? If you're going to get into something such as visual art, music, dancing, anything creative, I believe that it needs to be an obsession. Um, I'm obsessed with what I do. It's a healthy obsession. So I would pay attention to how badly you want something and how obsessed you are about it. Because I don't think, I don't think anything can be achieved greatly if you're not obsessed with it. Inspiring words from a hardworking man. And what a way to treat your work. Make it an obsession. He's painting on a windmill-like surface for his new project. If you want to see more of his pieces, check out this link, chrisjusticeart.com or his Instagram, at chrisjustice underscore art. Here's hoping for another year filled with hundreds of more pieces on new Ventress services. Speaking of Ventress, let's talk about the one-man band moving up in the music scene, Blind Boss. He's Costa Mesa, born and raised, and his new age music consists of many genres, such as rock, metal, and pop. He used to play in many bands, but now he's spending more time as a studio musician, experimenting with many instruments that feel his art. He's trying to make his music his passion that can pay the bills. Please welcome Max Histrionic, also known as Blind Boss. Through the day I hide in plain sight of 
friend and neighbor you're kin. A darkness emerges gracefully as the dusk settles in. Thought of the coding and slightly craze, I tip of my raging feast. When the time is right, I strike, I let the demon feast. Watch myself for lie on the sword. This blood runs to the gutters, I'm dismayed. Good thoughts is what's so brief, I thought it would last an entire day. But the search for its new members underway. Hell slay in the dusty basement, awaiting engagement, and not that time. Now the skeleton who is my priority. Each role taken from a different person Radius that in who's the next member That remains to shadow without replay Temporarily changing things So I've proudly done my shame And I watch myself for light on the stone Spell bleach takes me back to my younger days A cleaning dog shed up on the summertime patio Now I sit here Now that was quite the energy coming from a one-man band. Max Histrionic really knows how to crank up the volume and put on a show. If you want to hear more from Max and his projects, you can view his works on Bandcamp or follow him on Instagram or Facebook at blindboss.official. While genres like rock still continue to strive today, there are a few lesser-known parts of the subgenre that have recently been shed to light again. Our next story delves into the history and future of the long-lost genre known as surf pop. It has long been thrown under the rug, but bands such as Lower Joy are helping bring the genre back into the light. Southern California, it's home and well-known for many fantastic things, from its styles of art, unique architecture, and its beautiful beaches. SoCal, or California in general, is also renowned for the styles of music that is associated with the state. But one genre of music, which is probably the most iconic to California, has been pushed out of the limelight for some time now. Surf pop, or surf music, is a subgenre of rock music often associated with surf culture. It was a style of music that dominated the 60s, giving many people a Californian vibe. Artists such as the Beach Boys and the Safaris 
were a few of the groups that dominated the surf pop scene in its early days. But because of bands like the Beatles, pop rock began to take over, and soon surf pop became a relic of the past. However, there are still bands set on keeping it alive, and even bringing it back. Hello, everybody. You guys can come up to the front. We're a little overjoyed. We're going to play a couple songs for you guys. Enter Lower Joy, an indie surf pop band who are still using surf pop to entertain people to this day. It is relatively new, only being formed in early 2017. The band has five members, including Grayson Herg on synth, Alex Garcia as bass, Jonathan Cousin as drums, Noah Uria on lead guitar, and Brandon Reza as both singer and rhythmic guitar player. Its members are relatively young, most being in high school, but they embody the demographic that surf pop was meant for. Surf pop, I mean, to me personally, um, you know, I used to surf a lot, and I can like listen to our music and be like, oh, I want to go to the beach or something and hang out. It's um, happy music, but with a little bit of like the Huntington Beach sound. Through their age and energy, they can really perform this genre of music making it entertaining and fun for everyone. They go anywhere they can to play. Birthday parties, garages, but mostly they try to bring their music to venues in order to get more recognition for surf pop. No matter what direction that surf pop will go into for sound, it will always be associated with the Californian lifestyles. Bands like Lower Joy who play surf pop are doing it not only for themselves, but for the places that they live in. Just friends and family, I guess. Like, you don't have to be scared to go to a surf pop show. You don't really hear much about people getting hurt at surf pop shows. So I guess it just means fun. Revivalists of surf pop, such as the Drums, Beach Fossils, and Vivian Girls, continue to have the genre thrive in fresher and more modern ways. Groups like them help set an idea of what the future sound of surf pop will be heading to due to these revivalists, such as Lower Joy. Surf pop seems to be in no way leaving the music scene. Music like surf pop makes me proud to be a Californian. If you would like to know more about Lower Joy, you could check out their newest album, A Place to Stay, on their website, lowerjoy18.bandcamp.com. There, you can find their hit songs like Honey, You're Mine or Brain Dead. Well, it appears that's all the time we have, folks. Thank you for joining us here on South Coast Focus. For South Bat College, I'm Brandon Trin, and I hope you all have a good one. Keep on being artistic. Everybody. I'd like to welcome all the viewers to this edition of South Coast Focus, coming from Saddleback College, located in Mission Viejo, California. I'll be your host, Corey Bowman. Today, we are bringing you something thrilling, something epic, and something educational. First, we are going to learn about spearfishing with an Orange County local who has been involved with the sport for over six years. Next, we'll hear a truly innovative performance from Max Histrionic, better known as Blind Boss. Finally, we'll learn about a mother of nine who takes teaching in her own hands. We ask you to sit back and enjoy the show. Now, let's get our feet wet and begin to explore an ancient tradition known as spearfishing. Early hunters would go to streams and rivers to hunt for fish. Today, spearfishing is still around, though it has changed a lot. The sport can be done with snorkeling, scuba diving, or even free diving. With spearfishing clubs such as the OC Spiros in Orange County, Members are able to get plugged into a community and stay informed about developments in the sport. Spiro's members Holden, Ruslan, will explain more about the what's unique about spearfishing in Orange County. Let's check it out. 
Orange County is home to some of the best beaches in the world. They provide a perfect atmosphere for surfing and sunbathing, but what many tourists and even some locals still don't know is that Orange County is also home to a rapidly developing spearfishing community. The 40 miles of coastline in Orange County contains diverse ecosystems for the spearfishermen to hunt. The wealth in Orange County has also made it easy for spearfishing to develop since the equipment needed can total anywhere from a few hundred to several thousand dollars. Spearfishing is an investment, but the locals think it's worth it. Uh, spearfishing in Orange County is different or special because of the kind of environment that you're diving in. It'll be different, you know, wherever you go in the world. But here we have, you know, these gorgeous kelp forests. We have, you know, very diverse environment as far as it goes for reef species. But, you know, this great weather, you know, it's going to be 80 degrees some days when you're diving in October for lobster. It creates a unique situation. Spearfishing is an ancient method of fishing developed by early civilizations in which hunters would use sharpened sticks to hunt for fish in rivers and oceans. Today, however, spearfishing guns, long fins, and insulated wetsuits are common practice. Even with all of the developments in the spearfishing community, people unfamiliar with the sport consider it to be a danger to society and the ecosystems in the ocean. What these people don't understand is how many safety regulations are in place to protect ecosystems and surrounding communities. You can't spearfish in Laguna, you can only spearfish for certain fish throughout the year. You know, lobster and crustaceans have their own legal limits. Most people are also unaware that spearfishing is the most sustainable form of fishing, completely eliminating bycatch since spearfishermen are very selective with the fish and amount of fish they hunt. Waste is further reduced since the spear fishermen eat the fish they catch. Dedicated spear fishermen are aware of the stigma and do their best to stay educated on the sport by taking safety classes and joining clubs in Orange County. In the spear fishing community, there's a saying, it, it goes, you know, uh, spear fishing, where hobby becomes an obsession, you know, or hobby meets you know, obsession. And you see a lot of these guys in the sport, even myself, you know, this becomes an obsession. People who are new to this sport are encouraged to join spearfishing clubs since they foster a sense of community and do their best to educate people on how to stay safe. A lot of mentorships that can take place in clubs where you know, you're new, you're interested, and somebody can help you, you know, learn the ropes. While club members such as Holden are always willing to help out fellow spearfishermen, they are, however, a bit reluctant to share their favorite spearfishing spots. I can't tell you. I mean, if I tell you my spearfishing spots, then they're not going to be good anymore. Um, typically we're in Dana Point, yeah. Because the ocean is a massive place, there are plenty of fish to hunt for anyone interested in getting involved with the sport. Holden usually catches calico, sheep's head, and halibut. But when he goes diving, when he goes diving, but depending on the season, he often catches lobsters too. Good luck to Holden and other spear fishermen out there for more information about spearfishing, you can visit the OC Spiros website at www.ocspiros.org. There you can learn more about spearfishing, get a membership, or learn about upcoming events. Now here in our studio, we'd like to introduce you to our guest, Max Histrionic. He has been influenced by rock, punk, and metal, and has performed with many other bands at a professional level. Unlike other artists, Max has a unique talent. He performs in his one-man band. That's right, Max Hicksteronic is kicking things off with his one-man band, Blind Boss. Here he is performing Ego Echo. And now they better not promote you to 
a second glance. Think you're neither a spin, so you're not a fool to act. It's a new inside of me, you're well to that. Give me all of me. Hold on, now relax. I'll be away from me. This is, this is a trap. Say you for whatever now put us back into a one. Say you can say that I learned my lesson. Oh, will we? Come on, tell you, get it out of promise. Said I don't know, be the hero at your key. The man who steps up, got to quit, seems a man in my life. Boys, keep me playing. I told you you wouldn't be disappointed. High energy music and a unique back and forth between Max and the audience is what Blind Boss promises to its viewers. To find out even more about Blind Boss and the man behind the show, visit his website at chaminology.com slash blindboss. There you can watch even more footage from his previous gigs or even visit the official online store for some band merch that is sure to stand out. You can also use the website to stay updated on upcoming tour dates and how to find tickets to a show near you. Being a teacher is not an easy job, but being a mother is an even harder job. Somehow Kimberly Lattimore manages to do both and makes it look effortless. She was Miss California in 2013, and now she devotes her time to raising her nine children. Kimberly dedicates her time by providing her children with an education in the comfort of their own home. She wants to prepare them for the best as she can for the rest of the world, while juggling nine kids is no easy task, people know her as a homeschool teacher, but her children know her as Superwoman. This is Kimberly Lattimore. She's a stay-at-home mom of nine. From the first to the last kid, Kimberly has dedicated her time to schooling each at home. She started out with her first kid when she realized that by the age of one, he was farther along than most. She then moved to teaching each kid in different ways to fit the way that they learned. She starts each day with an hour of Bible study then moves the kids to the classroom to start their work. We go to math because we still have, you know, it's better attention in the morning, and then we do English, and we try to get those big ones out of the way in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we do science. I really like hands-on learning, um, so a lot of our learning is done in everyday life, but we do have those times where we have to sit down with math. Um, I found that right now, currently, I have um, a set of older kids that are all two years apart. There's eight of them in the beginning. And then um, Bella, who's eight years younger. So I have found that sometimes it's better for me to get up early with Bella in the morning and get through some of her stuff just with her since it's so much different than my two high schoolers. And um, so I think you have to really see what's the problem of the year um, and figure it out. So her, we'll do math and we'll do reading before the big kids get up. That way, when I'm working on math and English with them, she can go to drawing, which is her very favorite thing to do. Each kid has a background in art, but her fourth oldest, Melissa, has made it a hobby that has taken over. Now that Melissa is out of the house, Bella has begun to fill the house with her drawings. Oh, Bella pretty much has access to glue and tape and um, scissors pretty much all the time. Usually there's no problem. The other day she did glue an artwork to my wall because she couldn't find the tape and we had to explain that 
glue is pretty permanent. <laughs> Another important attribute to homeschool is physical activity. Each kid has a background in gymnastics and all of the girls have done ballet. Ranging from dance to karate, each kid has a different activity that they do in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, we also had horseback riding. We ended up having art classes and we did a lot outside. So when I say we did gym, um, all eight kids were involved in gymnastics. Um, some were on teams um, and we were there pretty much every single day. That's pretty much what we did from three to seven was sports of some sort somewhere. And I tried to keep them close. So the ballet studio was across the street um, from the gym studio so if they had a ballet class and then they'd cross over and I'd be walking back and forth um, picking up and making sure on the hour that people switched to whatever but we stayed really really involved um, until we had um, the fall in 2009 when eight and nine when um, the market dropped uh, and then the kids had to pick a sport after the market crash money was hard they had to cut down on their activities to be able to live the life that they wanted now that Kimberly is a stay-at-home mom, her husband Tony has to work very hard. He's a photographer, personal trainer, and entrepreneur. Raising nine kids is hard, especially when homeschooling and living a normal life. But Kimberly Lattimore, she makes it look easy. Oh, what a happy family. Looks like Kimberly has everything under control. Although, personally, I can't imagine going to the same school with my sister or brother, but it definitely seems to be working for those kids. If you, know, if you want to know more about Kimberly and her family, you can read about her journey in an in-depth article done by the OC Register. It's whatever it takes to get that education, and their education is in good hands. After all, mother knows best. That's all the time we have for today. We certainly went on an exciting journey. We dove into the ocean and learned about spearfishing with Holden, we listened to Ego Echo by Blind Boss, and lastly, we entered the Lattimore household and learned about how Kimberly homeschools her nine children. For myself, Corey Bowman, here on South Coast Focus on Channel 39, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Until next time, Orange County, stay safe. Hello everyone, I'm your host Glenn Bianchi for this edition of South Coast Focus brought to you by Saddleback College located in Mission Viejo, California. We have a diverse show for you today that's heartwarming and fun. First, we have an amazing nonprofit organization looking to help newly immigrated Iranians in whatever way possible. Then, a brilliant live performance by a one-man band, Blind Boss. And to finish it all up, a great in-depth look at an animal shelter near us, which helps find a safe home for all of our furry little friends, big and small. Now let's begin with the nonprofit PARS Equality Center, whose mission is to help new Iranian immigrants. PARS is a community for Iranians helping out immigrants with multiple issues, from learning the English language to helping make resumes. Whether they come from out of state or from out of the country, there has been a rise in the Iranian population here in Southern California. This is roughly a 14% increase each year, making the population of Iranians in Southern California to be estimated around 300,000 plus. Now let's take a glimpse into PARS Equality Center. PARS Equality Center is a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization located in San Jose, California, Los Angeles, and most recently in 2016, Orange County. PAR's mission is dedicated to helping Iranian American and other Farsi speaking immigrants by providing legal and social services. The Cyrus Cylinder on PAR's logo is the first declaration of universal human rights which represents unity. The founder, Bida Daryabari, has a long standing passion for increasing knowledge of her native Iranian culture. PARS provides a variety of services such as career planning workshops, ESL classes, legal services, healthcare, citizenship preparation and computer support services which help its members stay informed and become independent. 
their main point is to help newcomers and immigrants who uh, may not know what to do here and then they need resources here. It's pretty much the only uh, organization that covers from A to Z. Whether it's their legal needs, whether their social services needs, you know, um, community education, workshops, and things like that that they would need. Is, that's what PARS comes in and provides. Volunteers are the backbone of nonprofit organizations providing duties such as fundraising, administrative tasks, and helping spread the word of the organization. PARS ESL classes help immigrants to improve their English communication skills. I've been teaching for about 42 years and currently I teach at a community college but I'm teaching Spanish there. I feel good to know that, that I can um, help people and uh, this group is very enthusiastic. One of the things the students told me they wanted is music. They said they uh, like music but they don't always understand it. <laughs> Students get the opportunity to be in a situation that works to mimic their cultural identity. PARS provides a safe and accepting atmosphere for them to participate with less inhibition. PARS prepared an appreciation dinner party to thank all the volunteers who contribute, as well as to follow its mission of bringing unity and to act as a catalyst for social, cultural, and economic integration, with a strong focus on families and individuals who are refugees, assailees, and those living in poverty. Uh, I'm really proud because um, I talk about uh, this organization with a couple of people. I told them like um, how great this is. Um, it's just a nonprofit organization that they just help um, the people that they just knew the country. Um, they help them found house. They found uh, help them found um, jobs. Like. Um, they help them feel um, warm and welcome to this new country. They don't feel like um, left alone. So that, I think that's really great that what they're doing. Cause I'm happy clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Cause I'm happy clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Sorry, that's a really catchy tune. Now, our community is always expanding and it's great to hear about organizations helping people out. For more information, you can check out their website at www.parsequalitycenter.org or email them with any questions at info at or call them at 949-392-1000. Thank you for watching. Remember, they have a few locations here in California. Now let's give our attention to Max Histrionic, a brilliant artist from Costa Mesa, California, with an interesting band called Blind Boss, which is solely made up of him playing a number of instruments. Blind Boss is a punk, metal, and soft rock band taking inspiration from across the spectrum from artists such as Green Day, Michael Jackson, and Metallica. A live multimedia performer, Max is a one-man band using a pre-recording of himself playing other instruments mixed with a live performance. Max will be performing an original song of his own, Toad.
I'm skiing in the summer from the slopes of a bathroom. Punch and jeans, punch room shots, ear banks, it's our money watch. Punch and jeans, punch room shots, ear banks, it's our money watch. Maybe one day I'll be as good as Max Histrionic. Now, if you want to hear more of Blind Boss, check out his SoundCloud at www.soundcloud.com slash blindbossofficial or any of his other social media outlets where he can be found at, such as Blind Boss Official on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. He has a number of upcoming shows along with this album, which is planned to be released sometime in 2018. We got in contact with the Pet Project Foundation, located in San Clemente, California, whose aim is to do right by all animals. They have a strict adoption policy, making sure pets go to the right family, putting the adopted pet first, and matching them with the right homes where they are a good fit for the family. Examples of animals they find homes for include rabbits, various birds, rats, and of course, dogs and cats. The San Clemente Danapoi Animal Shelter, in partnership with the Pet Project Foundation, has been successfully rescuing abandoned animals for almost 30 years. Locating in this stunning area, the animals are sure to live within safe and friendly environment. With a 98% adoption rate, this place has been named Best Place to Adopt a Pet by the Orange Coast Magazine. Each year, the volunteers who generously dedicated over 25,000 hours walking and socializing with the animals. Over $350,000 have been donated to help the animals yearly. The shelter mainly helps the dogs, cats, and rabbits. But turtles, pigs, rats, and birds also come occasionally, depending on the situation. Animals are adopted on a daily basis. There's two of them being adopted just today. Um, so every day, they're going home. Not everyone can adopt a pet from this animal shelter. Although anyone is welcome to come in and fill out the application, the staff here take the process of consideration very seriously. Speaking of the dog, if anyone wants to adopt one, they have to fill out the form. And if they qualify, the shelter will get back to them, and then they will meet the dog one by one while the volunteers are observing the interaction. Anyone can walk in and ask. Anyone can fill out an application. However, we like to pair an animal with a family. For example, if we have an active dog like a black lab, we like to pair it with an active family or if we have a senior citizen, that we'd be more likely to pair with a, maybe a calmer dog, a small dog. Multiple applications are accepted for each dog, but the volunteers and the staff will have a small meeting after the observation to make the decision on who's going to take the dog home. One thing that is really interesting about this shelter is the animal rescue program which occurs monthly. When we have 10 or 12 empty cages, uh, we go to high kill shelters and pull out 10 or 12 adoptable dogs. And it's a very, very successful program. We do it once a month, and it's a win-win for everybody. For more information, visit petprotectfoundation.org or call 949 Remember, these pets are waiting for you.
man, if only they had monkeys too. But still, I wish I could adopt all those adorable animals. Just remember, it's located off the 5 Freeway at 221 Avenida Fabricante in San Clemente, California. And if you know someone that might be looking for a pet to adopt, maybe this is the shelter for them. Now don't forget, you can contact them by calling them at 949-595-8899 or emailing them at info at petprojectfoundation.org. Well, that wraps up another edition of South Coast Focus. I hope that you enjoyed these stories of dedication and ambition. Thank you, Parza Quality Center, for helping out the community. Best of luck to Blind Boss for all of his future endeavors. And to the people of Pet Project Foundation, thank you for giving us the in-depth view of what you guys do best. Well, this has been your host, Glenn Bianchi, and to all that are watching, don't forget to be awesome. Hey guys, what's up? I'm your host, Ashley White, and welcome to South Coast Focus here on Channel 39. Today, we're taking a closer look at two diverse music groups here in Orange County. The first is a local youth orchestra, which is toured all over Europe. Then, we'll have an in-house performance from the one-man band, Blind Boss. Afterwards, we'll get a glimpse into the founding of Blind Boss and the man behind it all, Max Histrionic. South Coast Youth Symphony Orchestra, or SCYSO for short, began in the early 2000s with the hopes of creating a welcoming environment for young aspiring musicians. SCYSO did just that and began teaching students the skills they need in order to perform locally and internationally. With an orchestra that's constantly changing and growing, the students are pushed to their musical limit to adapt to the challenges of each new season. Let's take a closer look into what it's like to be a part of this orchestra. Here in Mission Viejo, members of the South Coast Youth Symphony Orchestra meet to rehearse for their upcoming concert at Chapman University. They are led by the charismatic Rocky Lee, who founded SCYSO with his wife, Sarah Garbett Lee, in 2001. They wanted to create an orchestra in which the students are challenged in learning how to play their instrument while developing important life skills. Character is one thing that we really strive to, um, to build in our musicians. Um, leadership, um, that's always something that, um, you know, here we expect the students to um, not just participate, but take an active role in making the orchestra better. Not only do the members perform locally, they also perform internationally. Since 2005, SCYSO has performed in 10 European countries, such as the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Greece. They spent about two weeks on tour where they sightsee and put on free concerts at local churches and universities. Although the members are not required to go on these tours, it is encouraged to do so due to the valuable experiences they gain on the stage. Um, I, th I think for any musician, um, part, of, part of maturing is the performance aspect. Um, a lot of times you cannot learn that performance aspect in a rehearsal. You know, it's kind of like a pilot. You measure your hours in the sky. You know, for, for musicians, you measure your, your, your experience on stage. And to be able to play at an international stage, that, that, that furthers that experience. This is an outside group. This is not a class they have to enroll. This is their own choice to be here. So with that, I think as a conductor, um, you know, to be able to see everyone's hard work at the end of the season, looking around the orchestra and remembering all those moments and, you know, in the rehearsal that you know, really touched everyone's life. And to see that at the very end of the season is, um, is something that you just can't duplicate it elsewhere. Yeah, so that's, um, that's the most rewarding. SCYSO has a wide age range, with their youngest member being seven years old and their oldest being 18 years old. Members can remain as students until they graduate from high school and can return to become staff members while still in college. 
former student and current staff member Taylor Zinn reflects on her time as a member of the orchestra. I guess my favorite part is kind of like my, the role that I get to play. Um, I'm like an overseer of pretty much my section, so like the string section. So it's good to know that I have this responsibility, this like duty of helping out um, the other students. It just It's more than just telling them what to do, how to play certain sections. It's also about developing like um, a working relationship, these sort of friendship bonds because that's how you're able to really connect with the students. As for what's next for SCYSO, Rocky has exciting plans in store for their upcoming international tour. So it's really neat because um, 2020, as you're aware, is the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. So um, right now we're getting uh, you know, an official invitation from, from Tokyo to do some uh, pre-Olympic uh, celebration. For more information about SCYSO and how to get involved, visit scysomusic.org. Seeing the kids from SCYSO rehearse for their next performance honestly had me reminiscing on my own orchestra experience back in grade school. Hopefully, SCYSO gave you the same musical inspiration that they did for me. Seeing them perform live is an experience you don't want to miss. Again, visit seysomusic.org for more information like concert dates and ticket sales. Now it's time for a special musical performance introducing Max Histrionic, Costa Mesa local, the man behind the band, Blind Boss. Negatory rampage and so I'll be quite fed Sweat a new beginning, cool come go like that Give me underneath the killer and a guy a man Give me out of me I will not relax I'll be away from me This is a trick, yeah Song and dance, and so all the batter up and when you take a second glance. You can neither rest with so I can neither afford to act. It's a hero inside of me, who will imagine that. Give me out of me, I will not relax. I'll be away from me, cause this is a trap. Take you for granted, but now I put us back in square one. Safe to say that I learned my lesson. Halloween, come on down. I'm sad here, getting out of promise. And I don't know, be the only one to keep. A man accepts my consequences. A man am I right? Boys can be part. Check out more on Blind Boss, visit Blind Boss Official on the social media sites down below. With heavy influences of punk rock and metal, Blind Boss sure put on an energetic performance here in our studio. Max Histrionic has put countless hours into creating a musical project that redefines the modern day band. 
From pre-production to live show, Max shows his dedication to making his dream a reality. Let's take a closer look into the musical world of Blind Boss. Hi, my name is Max, and I'm the singer, guitarist, bassist, DJ, and drummer of Blind Boss. Blind Boss is a live multimedia experience. So the way Blind Boss came together as a one-man live show is I had been working with a, a lot of different bands over the past 10 or 15 years or so as I was learning how to play. After looking at like my backlog of songs and thought, why not give it a shot by myself? From a lyrical perspective, I um, often approach a lot of things with satire. My music will poke fun at a, a lot of different people. Each song goes through a different person, whether it's a different personality that I've kind of absorbed in my lifetime or uh, something that I just looked at objectively and then I'm painting a picture through my lens. I'll get a batch of songs ready and then head into a studio and record and edit that um, as far as like the sequence of songs and order and things like that. Uh, then my buddy Renzo and I will go into a like a video studio, white room with the infinity wall. Uh, we'll set up multiple different camera angles and he'll be holding like a, a nice DSLR or something. And we're just trying to get as many uh, energetic shots as possible. Uh, and then the real work all goes down um, at his office studio and we just sit there and it, it'll take a month to edit 45 minutes of material and that's working every night for about six hours, so. Welcome to Smith Room Studios. Come on in. This is where the magic happens. So a blind boss performance is gonna include a lot of random elements that I'm trying to bring to the table. It is pre-recorded, so it does present its set of challenges on how to make it more unique for someone seeing it for the first time versus someone seeing it for the eighth time. Heckling audience members as they're heckling me, uh, getting them to participate during choruses and songs. During tuning breaks, I might bring up current events or a stupid joke that I just thought of. Always trying to make it interesting for, for you and for me. This next song is about your pathetic addiction to your smartphone. Get over it. So after everything, all the recording, editing, and it's just about the live performance for me. Um, love being up in front of people and interacting with them, uh, talking with them after a show. And if someone comes up to me and says, I had a great time, thanks for playing, it makes my day. And that's why I'm gonna continue doing what I do. Blind Boss will be releasing a brand new album in early 2018, along with a string of local shows. Keep checking back at blindboss.official for release dates, venue announcements, and more. Once again, thank you SCYSO for sharing your talents and story with us. Also, thanks to Max Histrionic for his in-studio performance and giving us an inside look into his life of music. To keep your musical inspiration at an all-time high, make sure to go out and show your support for local artists, attend some youth orchestras, or maybe even create music of your own. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have. I'm your host, Ashley White, and thank you for tuning in to this week's South Coast Focus here on Channel 39. See you next time.
Structure, feel ideals ruptured.
my foes, the peanut gallery, I need your help. One last time, let me hear you say, hey. Let me hear you say, hey. All right, that's a little better. I'm going to lead you in. Get ready. Thank you all so much for coming out. We're Blind Boss, Costa Mesa, California. We'll be back soon. So far, hey, you ready? Sell back! Watch your trail is going!
Special to the night girl. 